All right, next up for Killer Croc Gator Week, we have Primeval. Now, when I had posted about this, saying I was going to be reviewing it, I got a couple replies from people who, one of them which was like, just watched the movie yesterday, weirdly. Fucking hated it. I haven't hated a movie this much in a long time. And then I got another reply like, oh man, I hated this movie. And I was like, oh, really? Is this movie hated? And then I looked on IMDb and, and the rating is in like a four, like a 4.8 or four low rating. And I'm like, so I went into this movie and I was like, all right, let's see. As usual, I don't, I swear to God, guys, I don't do this on purpose. I, I don't mean to always be the odd man out of things, but I fucking really enjoyed this movie a lot. I had such a good time with it. My really only complaint of this movie is the CGI on the, on the gator or the croc, the crocodile. Outside of that, I really didn't have any other issues. And here's the thing. Hear me out. Um, let me plead my case here. Um, I just watched Rogue and Blackwater back to back, and they are essentially very similar movies. There's a tour group that goes out with a couple of people, and the boat gets knocked over, and they end up on this little area where you know they can't spend too much time there, or they're gonna die of exposure, or they're gonna die because the elements will get the best of them, which is exposure. But it, in that case, it was water versus uh, just time. Um, and it, it, there was a lot of similar beats to it. And this one was kind of like a hodgepodge of ideas. It was like they're dealing with a bunch of different issues. It's like a couple different movies wrapped in one. And I liked the change of pace. I didn't mind that they went into Africa and that there was this kind of like civil unrest, a civil war going on. And they were dealing with like refugees and they were dealing with uh, militias and, um, you know, genocide and all those kinds of things. I thought that it fit the location in which they were at, and I felt like it added to the tension. And it was like, it wasn't just the crocodile. I like that. I like when they're kind of thrown into a blender of, of um, unease, like that there's no safety around them. I like when, I remember this movie, I saw another creature feature kind of movie, another killer animal movie called Burning Bright. And what I really liked about that movie was that there was this girl and she was trapped in a house with her autistic brother. Um, and the house had, had all been boarded up for a hurricane and there was a hurricane going on outside and inside someone had released a Bengal tiger. And it was like, even if she gets away from the Bengal tiger, outside is an imminent threat that will more than likely kill her or 100% for sure kill her if she tries to get out there. And I just like that. I like when they're in a setting where the croc isn't the only danger. Like even if they get away from the croc, they're still in Africa in a war zone where they don't know who they can trust and everyone's trying to kill them and, they, and they're dealing with these, uh, these soldiers that are around every corner and they're trying to kill people and, and they legitimately do not know who their friend is. They Every minute is like, okay, you know, they, they, the croc isn't even the biggest threat in this movie to them, even though it is a massive one. And I, I, one, of, one of the people who said they didn't like this is like the lack of croc. And it's like, I kind of get that, I suppose. I feel like we see it a decent amount. I feel like it is a looming threat the entire time. Like, I never forgot about the croc. It was, I was never watching this movie being like, oh yeah, isn't this a killer croc movie? Never. That was always on my mind. Like, when is he going to pop up? When is he coming? And he did. It's kind of reminded me of Godzilla, the new one. Not the newest one, King of the Monsters, but the one before that, Gareth Evans one. Um... No, Gareth Edwards. I always mix up those two damn guys' names. They're too close together. Gareth Edwards from Rogue One. Sorry, not Gareth Evans, the raid director. Too damn close. All right, anyway. Um, but yeah, people were like, well, I didn't want the, I didn't want all that other story. I just wanted to see Godzilla. And they go to a croc movie and they're like, I just want to see the croc. And it's like, then watch Rogue. You know, there you go. There's your solution. I like a movie that is just kind of a, a blending of all sorts of genres and putting people in the most dire circumstances imaginable. Like, it's not just this croc that, that's coming after him. It's, it's the entire country, this foreign country fishing.
little break in the video there because someone called me and I never remember to put my fucking phone on airplane mode. So there you go. Uh, you'd think I'd learn from that eventually. All right, I'm getting off of that, uh, getting off of that rant there. Uh, I will say this. Orlando Jones, who I remember from certain things here and there, whatever. I thought he was fucking hilarious in this movie. There's so many lines in this movie that I just thought were just laugh out loud funny and get off my screen jesus christ um i thought <laughs> there's a little, there there's a bunch of different ones and i'm sure there's some that'll probably be insensitive or some people are so fucking sensitive god shut up um but there's one where he finds out that his boss is gay and she's like don't tell anybody and he's like, who the fuck am I going to tell? Jojo? And there's this, um, this African uh, refugee with them who wants to come to America with them. And he's proven himself to be uh, loyal to them. And, and they're buddies with him at this point. And he just like, when he said that at first, uh, that alone got me laughing like hysterically. Because it was just, it, it was so funny in the moment, the context and whatever. And then he like goes, hey, Jojo, you know my blah, whatever. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, he's gay. And, and Jojo's like, okay. The way that all played out, that joke, ah, fuck, man. I laughed about that for like a full minute straight. I, I thought that was so funny. And there was a whole bunch of other ones. And as I said, there's a really like, I guess people could see it as, um, extremely insensitive especially maybe coming from a black man like he talks about how maybe he's like I, I never thought I would say this but uh, slavery doesn't sound so bad or something like I'd fucking I'd do anything to get out of Africa I mean people might find that to be not funny or insensitive or whatever but I thought it was fucking hilarious because of how horrible the situation is that he would actually take slavery over it it's just it was funny anyway um, we've got uh, Dominic Purcell here from Prisoner, Prisoner, Prison Break fame. And uh, we've even got Sutter Kane himself in here, Jurgen Proch now, uh, which is always great to see him. So the croc, which is referred to as Gustav, is uh, talked about like the boogeyman in this movie. Like, I like how there's like the civil unrest in, in, in the... Uh, you know the place that they go and that there's all this worry about this and then that Gustav is kind of just circling the perimeter of this civil war and he's just kind of coming in and munching and it's like not even the main priority of these people it's not even like the main focus because there's such terror around them that the the killer croc is almost secondary to them and I don't know, it just it, it made a very interesting dynamic for me when I was watching the movie, and it just worked for me. Other people, it seems not to work for, and, you know, okay, well, that's a bummer. Um, and, I mean, shit, man, there's even a scene where the soldiers are, they're on a boat, and they're getting fired at from these dudes on the outside, and then the soldiers that they're with are, you know, they're on these, like, turret guns, and they're blasting these guys out of the trees, ripping their bodies apart with these bullets, and they're just laughing. They're just having a good time. This is just, like, a Saturday fucking night for them. Like, this is no big deal, and here we are, uh, you know, Americans who, who never see this shit in reality, who never see the stuff up close. We hear the stories, but we don't see it. It's not part of our everyday life, and we're just, heads are down, we're scared, we're freaking out, and these guys are just like, ha, ha, ha. Like, it's no big deal. It reminds me of the movie 13 Hours, um, where they're in this firefight. They're in this gunfight with all these, uh, with all these um, I don't know what the hell to call them, uh, guys that are out there that are coming after them. And um, there's just people out there, and they're just sitting outside just watching TV. And there's a gunfight going on right next to them. And they're like, you need to get inside. The soldiers are freaking out. You need to get in fucking side. What are you doing? What are you doing? And these guys are looking over at them like, this is our every day. Like, I'm not going to live my life like that. I'm, a, I'm watching my fucking soccer game. Like, what, what do I care? <laughs> Inside, I mean, I'm going to get shot tomorrow maybe. Like, this, isn't, this, is, this is my life. This is my everyday life. I don't know. It's, it's just something so interesting about that. It's horrible. I don't think it's a good thing. I'm not intrigued in the sense of like, oh, that's really, that's really cool. And that's really, no, it's fucking horrible. But that doesn't mean it's still not super intriguing. It's like people who fucking get obsessed with serial killers or the Holocaust or whatever. 
They're not good things, but they're very interesting, you know, regardless. Because it's just wild to think that our minds can be so wildly different like that. I like how they're eating um, something. And he's like, what is this? And the guy says something. He's like, what does that mean? And he's like, it's a saying out here. It means meat is meat. And then he's like, otherwise, don't ask. And he just, he's like, ah, ha, ha. And he spits it out across. And then there's a really funny, uncomfortable scene where they play some music for him. And they're like, now you tell us some of your music. And Orlando Jones is like, all right, man, give me a beat. And he's like trying to get him, and they're like, uh huh. And he's like, man, this is fucking embarrassing. Another really funny line. I just, I never really thought he was funny before. I've never seen anything that I remember him being funny in, but he really worked for me in this one. Um, the comedic relief character in these kinds of movies usually annoys the shit out of me, but this one really worked. And I think that helps a lot. I think that if you find Orlando Jones' character to be annoying as shit, if he's the you know, um, Chris Tucker of the fifth element for a lot of people. I personally love that movie. I don't have any problem with him in there, but I know that's a, that's a character. A lot of people really hate and feel like brings the film down. If you don't like that character, yeah, it's going to hurt the film a lot for you. But if you like the character, like I did, yeah, I was good with it. Um, and then you got kind of the, um, the dichotomy of you got one guy who wants very desperately to save the Crocs life, does not want to kill. And then you got Jurgen character here who wants it dead and then we find out really good reason for why at the end because he ate his wife in front of him and that's why he has all the scars on his bodies because Jurgen was shooting into him with every bullet he had and this thing was just sitting there laughing at him um, like yeah right that ain't gonna take me out uh, and another huge difference between this one and any other croc movie that I've watched the croc lives the croc gets away with it. They just run away, and that's that. And Gustav is just out there terrorizing the countryside still. They don't do anything about it. He's just out there killing people still at the end of the movie. He's still chomping on people in the credits roll. And it's like, oh, man, you don't see that one. They they don't even get him. He, he's, he's too vicious to even take down. Um, they put the tracker on him, which I feel like... I don't know. I, I, I feel like it only plays to convenience in the movie. Like, there's some times where it's like, you didn't know he was around? You have a tracker on him. Why aren't you using that? And then there was other times where they were really using the tracker. Because at times I was like, is he not really tracked? Did they not have the right thing? Are they not? And it's like, they'll pull it up when it's convenient to the plot, and then they'll kind of just dismiss it when it's not. It's like, how is this guy getting attacked when they should be tracking? They should be having a guy stand there the whole time being like, okay, he's here. Okay, he's here. And it's like, he sneaks up on them and it's like he's tracked almost the entire movie how can he sneak up on you he shouldn't be able to so that was a really stupid silly thing in the movie um but i was enjoying the movie so much it was kind of one of those things it was like it's a non-issue it's like whatever um jojo really wants to go to america jojo i couldn't take this name seriously my kids are super into jojo siwa from nickelodeon so every time i kept hearing that i was just like thinking of like jojo siwa the whole damn time uh, I kept singing her songs in my head. Yes, I know every lyric to every JoJo song. Every one of them. Because I've heard them so many damn times. Um, but we're not going to get off on a tangent about that because I probably would. It's not a bad one, by the way. I think... No, okay. No, no. But I don't think she's bad. Um, <sighs> all right. Um, and... I love when I write notes and I don't even remember what the hell I was even making. Oh, so this thing goes and it tries to take out, it takes out a bridge. It takes out support beams. This is definitely the monstrous of, the most monstrous of the crocs in, in the movies I've watched so far. This thing is enormous. And the CGI on it at times is horrible. Then there's other times where it looks really, really good. So I'm not really sure what the difference is. Maybe one was practical and one was CG, but the CG is, is not good. Uh, I will say the croc saves them multiple times. He saves her from getting raped, and he also saves them from little Gustav, the, the, the guy who's running everything behind the scenes. He's their friend, but he, they find out he's the true enemy of the movie. Um, there's even a beheading scene in here of this like witch doctor character and his family and he catches that on tape and he's like this is the real story because the the croc story is bullshit it's you know it's a it's a crock of shit you know and um 
he goes out there and he wants a real story. And as I said, like the genocide is the real story. And she's like, no one gives a shit. And Orlando Jones character makes a really good point. Like people in America don't give a fuck about black on black violence in their neighborhood. What makes you think they're going to care about it here? 6,000 miles away. And it's like, yeah, good point. But she's like, I care. And she's like, I want to take this back. And she has this whole idea of like, fuck the croc. This is what we're going to be doing. But the croc is, I don't know. Like, as I said, like, I feel like the croc is always a threat. I feel like the croc is always imminent. I feel like the croc is a minute away if every, every turn. So I don't know, not enough croc. Yeah, you might not see him enough, but you can watch Black Water. You probably only see the croc in that movie for two minutes altogether. But it's a, it's my favorite croc movie, period. So, or gator movie or, or whatever. So, I don't know. Um, and then JoJo saves them. As I said, he, he really uh, earns his place. And when he gets to go to America with them at the end, I was like, yes, you definitely deserve it so, so much. Um, and it was a bummer when Orlando's character dies when they find his body just sitting there. I thought for sure because they cut away when he was on, in the run. And I was like, oh, maybe they'll, you know, he's going to come to the rescue later. He's going to have his big moment. Nope, he's just dead. Um, which was, you know, was unexpected, which is good. It just, I liked his character, so I didn't want him to die. Uh, but I guess they replaced him with uh, JoJo. JoJo Siwa comes to New York. Um, and then, oh man, the kill in this movie, or the best kill in this movie, so great. He grabs the main bad guy here, chomps his body in half, then opens his mouth back up, catches his head between his teeth, and has his head, like right here, in between his teeth, and just clamps down, and the head pops like a zit. It's disgusting and brutal and amazing, and I loved it. Holy shit. Yes, it was CGI. It didn't look amazing, but I loved the concept of it. I loved the idea of it, and I loved seeing it. Um, and then <laughs> the croc comes in the back of a Range Rover, and it's like chomping, and JoJo's right there. He's next to it, and they're chomping at it, and they finally get away, and he's like stabbing at it, and it falls out of the freaking truck, and they drive off, and they get on a plane, and they go home, and Gustav has free to... Uh, reign terror on the countryside uh, even after the ceasefire has been issued i guess once they killed that guy then they didn't have a leader and then a, a ceasefire so i don't know i guess they kind of uh even though they didn't get rid of the croc they got rid of the uh the genocide so they did a good job and and now all you have to deal with is a croc coming and taking one of you and every once in a while i think that all the soldiers all the guns and all, all the uh, the intent that they had with, with the with the killing and everything, they should take that and they should hunt down the fucking crocodile. I mean, in real life, would take killing that crocodile be that tough? I mean, really? No. So uh, they would take this thing out. It's a movie, so of course it's, it's unkillable, but it's killable. All right, guys, I can't take any more heat. Um, I'll watch some other ones soon and crawl tomorrow. I look forward to talking with you guys on that one. Other than that, adios.